last episode of our Australian adventure, we made a spare-of-the-moment decision to fly home to see our family for Christmas. We made a short but eventful flight that involved a mayday call before landing in Pinaroo to escape the rough turbulence. We're at Pinaroo. There's flies everywhere. It's stinking hot. Later this afternoon, quite late this afternoon, it should cool off enough for us to um, probably head to Muldura so we can get fuel. We're starting to run pretty low and uh, that's our um, nearest fuel stop. We sat at Pinaroo for over seven hours waiting for the temperatures to cool down so that we could get to Muldura without as much turbulence. When we left this morning, we thought we'd be home by mid-afternoon. This was not to be. Put your flight plan in. Yep. Uh, it's hot. Yep. Playing 37 now. 37 in the plane? Oh, it's under the work, under the tail. Oh, so it's in the shade. Yep. Well, good thing it's cooled off then, isn't it? By 6pm it had finally cooled down enough for us to head off. We now only had enough daylight to get as far as Mildura, where we could refuel and spend the night and still be home for Christmas morning. Believe our luck. 
We had no fuel and unbeknown to us, our fuel card for that particular type of Bowser had expired. Not something that I looked at before we left. I thought they would have just sent me out a new one when it was done. Expired. I ran out in January. Last year. Yeah. It was Christmas Eve and we thought it was highly likely we'd be stranded here for the next few days waiting for the pump operator to return to work. We got the surprise of our life when he answered the phone and said he'd be happy to drive to the airport to help us out. Right, yeah. No worries. Thanks for that. Sorry to hassle you. Right. Um, it'll be 20 minutes. You'll get out what you need. We tied down headed to the caravan park next door to find a bed for the night. The next morning we were up before the sun to make an early departure. We were finally heading home. While the early morning was hard work, the spectacular sunrise made it all worth it. This is Gerald Traffic Yankee Hotel Charlie, I'll be taxiing the runway street. Fucking for the east. No Gerald. Not up yet. Yeah, all good. Yep, all good. of nothingness. No green, no nothing, and we're so far from anywhere. It's still early in the morning and it's really hard for me to keep my eyes open. Ducky Hayden doesn't have that same problem. Uh, you might not be quite in range, just come back if not. How's the weather looking? Um, they're wishing a new one. With 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 lines in the overview. That's not a good thing, is it? No, uh, most of the weather is to the north, north of Portland Quarry. Yep. Um, but there is still a uh, cloud on the, on the mountains. The ones that we're coming up to? No, uh, no, we're still an uh, hour away from them. Out the mountain ranges out near home. Okay. What are we expecting to see? A cloud on the mountain ranges, a bit of rain. About 70 miles north of Park, you get, start to get into the mountain ranges and stuff, and you know, head back towards the coast and the uh, Great Dividing Range. Play up there. At Smudgy, we're just flying over now. We'll set the Garmin autopilot up to fly its own descent using the VNAV function so it automatically calculates what 
say that the Senate needs to hold to arrive at Cessnock at the right height, so um, Cessnock's at 200 feet above sea level. Yep. And you want to fly in over the top. You want to do the, the YCNKBOM on your web browser. Yep. And see just the wind direction and speed. So, 8.30 a.m. Southeast. 9 kilometres, gusts of 15 kilometres. Uh, it's got the speed. Knots. 5 to 8 knots from the south east. So we'll be landing on runway 17. So we'll fly in over the top. Yep. Left hand turn, left hand turn, come in and land. Yep, gotcha. So we probably want to join Sir Crosswind, so we want to be at 1200 feet. Yep. Over the head aerodrome or just a little bit before it. Yes. So we go on the flight plan page. So flight plan. Yep. Down the bottom here there's a thing that's called VNAV, that's vertical navigation, so it navigates a profile. So if you scroll I over. VNAV, yep. Scroll over the okay, VNAV. yep. Yep. And the waypoint we're arriving at is Cessnock. Yep. Ideally we want to descend to 500 feet per minute, which is comfortable for us what we normally do. So we want to we want to be at twelve hundred feet yep. above the sea level sea level. And we we want a little bit of time to slow down because we don't want to just be going downhill yep. in the circuit. So just put in there by two nautical miles. So scroll it over to two nautical miles. That keeps going that's, oh, point, that's point, two. point two. So we can arm that within ten minutes so it's probably since um, in eleven or twelve minutes. Oh, uh, it, oh, okay, yep. So 12 minutes time we're at the top of descent. Yep. Huh. And this cloud might wreck our profile because we might have to duck under it. Okay. But once, yep. they, once they get to less than 10 minutes, then you can hit the VNAV button. Yep. And that arms it. So when that gets all the way down to zero, then it will start the descent. Yeah, okay. So everything will be fine except for if that cloud up in front of us is in our way, then we manually take over. Yep. Do you have to press the stop button to manually do that? Oh, I can just go into a different mode. Okay. So I can use the wheel too to, to set up a um, rate of descent on here. Yeah. That's vertical speed mode. Yeah. VNAV is the one where it's doing all the calculations all the time, just like the NAV one on this on this side. Yep. This side's which way it goes like that. Yep. This side's which way it goes Up and like down. That. Yeah. And these are just your modes. So the blue level button, if, if you're up, if it gets upset or something, you just hit that and it just writes itself. Oh, okay. Um, the flight director has those little purple bars in there. Yep. So you switch that on and off your damper, we don't have one in it, it stops it from drawing around so much. So that, that LVL button. Level, yep. Level. So if, you know that time when I was flying and the plane like did something funny yep. and I pushed the stick forward. The wrong way. Yep. Or the wrong or up, I can't remember. Yep. Um, if I freaked out, could I just press that LVL button any time? It doesn't have to have the autopilot on it. It'll, it'll, it'll it engage the autopilot. Yep. I think that travel changes your perspective on the world. Because you get to experience more. Well, you... Um, I don't really know how to explain it. It's really easy to live in a little box. Like, as we look out the window, the countryside changes so dramatically, and I didn't know Australia was any different to just this eastern coast that we travelled before. Yep. Um, like, the whole of South Australia looks, that we've covered, looks considerably different to the countryside in our eastern coast section that we live in. Yep. Get exposed to the way different, like how different people do things differently and how they live differently. Um, and it kind of opens your mind to um, greater things that you can do. Um, like the guy who is riding across Australia, he's riding a hundred and something kilometres a day in 40 degree days and we, we are stuck on the side of a runway in the middle of nowhere and it's not even as hot as some of the temperatures that 
um, he's experienced and it's just too hot to do anything, we just sit there yep. and knowing that he can ride through it, I don't know, makes me sort of think that, well, if it, he can do it, I could do it too, if I wanted to. Yep. Being exposed to people that find a way to do things that they want to do kind of is kind of empowering to um, you know, look at yourself and go, well I could do I could do that sort yep. of thing. Have a look at this descent here. That's coming up to four hundred to five hundred feet per minute that we've yep. programmed into. Yep. So in a moment, that's going to go green. Officially, there are two gentlemen in the airport. So telling you that it's now taken over the Venus. Yep. What I should have said in there too is the uh, flight we're descending to, 1200, so we'll capture that. Yep. And it's changed it to altitude select is waiting now, so it will okay. wait and capture again the 1200 um, feet once it gets to it. But how, long, how long will it be before it gets to that? Uh, 10 minutes. Okay. Oh, well, mission 02 and amended area full has been issued. Okay, so my seat's starting to get a bit more uncomfortable now. <laughs> home sweet home, just on the horizon. Yeah, we may have to duck through one of these holes here, maybe. Oh, 182 knots on the ISA, 183. Yep. And that's the speed I was wanting to be flying the entire trip. That's why it's come up so now we're going fast, it actually needs oh, 550, not 500 feet per minute rate of descent. Instead of 500. That we programmed it to. Yep. So I don't want to descend quite that quick because I need to find a gap in the cloud. Yep. So I can go back into the vertical speed mode to reduce the rate that it's descending at. We'll go yep. back to 400 feet per minute. Okay. I can't see it yet. Oh yeah, I can see it. Home sweet home. It's so green. The wind's actually the other way. Oh. North, north wind. It's actually not doing a whole lot down there. It isn't either. That's not traffic, Amy. Had no charge on the circuit. Crossing the runway one seven the first time. That's our longest ever stretch in one go. Well, it lined up to be a good one. <laughs> I thought it was only going to be a go around. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good Christmas. See ya. Bye. Join us for our next episode of our Australian adventure as we head to North Stradbroke Island. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so YouTube will let you know next time we upload a new video.